Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Welcome back to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. Mental health is always a big topic in the news and the Community Counseling Center is making a big difference. We have the foundation director here with us, Michelle Ramsey. Michelle, welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you again. It's great to be here. Uh, so you've been in your role for almost five years now, is that right? I have. Yeah? Yeah. How, uh, how, how have the last five years been? Well, we had to, you know, kind of muddle our way through things with COVID that, that affected us hugely because we're primarily an event-driven foundation and so we lost nine events during that time but um, we found creative ways to go ahead and and keep doing our work and through the foundation we support the gaps that are in the funding for the center itself and we exclusively support the the community counseling center so um, fortunately you know we had some good predecessors that kind of laid the pathway for us so it didn't wipe us out completely but it definitely changed um, our approach sure I, I want to talk about the foundation some of those events sure but just real quickly um, tell us a bit about the Community Counseling Center and you know I know that there's a location in Cape but you guys serve such a, a, a big area. We do. We actually serve five counties. So we serve Cape, Bullinger, Perry, St. Jen, Madison counties and, and Perry County. And we have almost 500 employees across those five counties that serve. Um, we're on track to, to hit probably close to 7,000 clients this year. Um, it, it just is a, it continues to grow. And we have um, 13 locations just in Cape alone. And so growing up in Cape, I always just knew Community Counseling Center was on the corner of Bloomfield and Silver Springs. Mm -hmm. And when I started here, it was like, what? I didn't even know this existed, you know? And we have Cottonwood, which we took over from the state when the state was going to close it. And we serve, um, we're one of the only inpatient intensive rehab centers for children that have mental and behavioral health issues um, in the state. So that's huge. And that's a population of ages seven to 17. Okay. And um, a lot of those kids, due to the circumstances that they've been dealt, the behavioral health issue, um, they're removed from their home and taken across the state and, and put in in the middle of a crisis. And so it's very important work that we do. And the goal is to get those children on track. Maybe it's medication modification, behavior modification, those types of things, and um, let them learn to be independent. And so we think that's really important. We have school-based counseling programs in all of our school districts. So we just do so much with the kids, but then we have three residential adult facilities also here in Cape. Some of them are transitional. We have clustered apartments where once someone has completed one of the programs for treatment, they can apply to be kind of independent and they learn those life skills. So there's just so much good. And it just makes what I do so rewarding because I actually can see the difference that we're making. Sure. So over those last five years, I mean, it's, it seems like, you know, you hear and read, uh, there's more awareness. Uh, people are becoming a little more in tune with like, okay, th this is a thing that we really need to be concerned mm -hmm. about and be focusing on. Uh, am I making that up? Or do you think in the last five years there, there has been more of a focus on I think there's been a huge focus to destigmatize mental health um, unfortunately someone that suffers from mental health or behavioral health um, those are things that they have no control over they're not it, when you're dealing with kids particularly they're not bad kids they're not the kids that are slow they're kids that can't help it because their brain is wired differently sure and I think parents of that demographic right now have been the advocates that have helped to bring awareness to mental health. And unfortunately for years, the stigmatism has been there. If you have mental health issues, if you're you know, schizophrenic or bipolar, that you're a creepy person or you're someone that you can't get a job or you can't. And the truth is once someone has the right, the right treatment and they can stay on that treatment, they can be successful just like you and I. They can have families, they can work, they can have careers. Mm -hmm. And so I think the goal has been all along to try to destigmatize that. And we definitely have done a lot of work in that area 
just talking about it, and that's the big key. So we, parents we've feel got a little more free to to bring to light what might be happening with their child. I think so, and I think a lot of the kids that we see, the anxiety and um, OCD and um, ADHD, those are very common diagnoses right now, and it's not the end of the world, and right. I think people are seeing that. Yeah. The other piece, and we're in the middle of Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, um, the other piece that has been very alarming is currently Missouri, for ages 10 to 17, the third leading cause of death for 10 to 17 year olds is suicide. Hmm. And that has become very apparent and I know our school-based counselors are just running themselves to death with having to go respond to a crisis and that's alarming. And so we have tried really hard during the month of September to push the suicide prevention. We've run our own campaigns. We have done some um, campaigns within our client base and uh, we just we need to break that stigma as well and let people know it's okay to say that they're not okay right now sure you mentioned this a little bit earlier but uh so the foundation which you lead mm -hmm. how how does the foundation support the community counseling center so we um we fill in the gaps we do a lot of service providing for programs that benefit all of our clients so we have um, some, we have an art gallery and people don't know that and they learn art therapy and as a way to help with their um, anxiety or whatever it may be. And so we provide all the supplies needed for those, those groups and he has now taken that all five counties. It used to just be in Cape, now he travels around and he does with kids, he does with adults, he does with those that just need some social interaction. Um, we provide um, big things. Sometimes we purchase real estate and make those transactions and help to provide new facilities. Um, during COVID, we bought the electrostatic sprayers that helped keep our residentials germ-free as much as possible. And those are big ticket items. And so the foundation does all of those support roles um, while trying to also raise some money that can help support new things. And so we've got some new programs that we're always looking for um, corporate sponsorships and things like that, that we can work together with somebody to fund, but we're always being approached with a new idea. Last year we gave $14,000 in grants to our own staff. They were able to apply for many grants for some programs that they saw that were in need that maybe we wouldn't have noticed. Like mm. they needed a, um, a calming room in the therapy areas for people that maybe get overwhelmingly upset and they just need to step away and they wanted a place for them to go instead of having to go out into a waiting room full of people. Sure. And so that was a great idea. So the foundation board decided, let's just go ahead and do it in all five counties. All right, real quickly, uh, as we wrap things up, you mentioned about businesses that could get involved. How can they get involved? Sure, they can contact me. We love to do cross promotion. We currently have one going on um, with PDQ. They've done raffle tickets for us and they offered a match for all the tickets that are sold. And so that's one way. Um, Scooters just did a give back the other day for 10% of all their sales to us. We're always looking for fun ways that we can work together to help bring awareness and support the foundation. All right, Michelle, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Cape Chronicle. The program is a collaboration between the Department of Mass Media at SEMO, the City of Cape, and River Radio. Our executive producer is N. Jun Lee, and I'm Mike Rennick. Thank you for watching. When times get dark,